Author's Note This video is my review of Thor Ragnarok, based on Thor by Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, and Jack the King Kirby. Bless his heart. Directed by Taika Waititi. Published by the Walt Disney Company and Marvel Studios. Starring Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Kate Blanchett, Idris Elba, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, Carl Urban, Mark Ruffalo, and Anthony Hopkins, with special guest star Benedict Cumberbatch as Dr. Stephen Strange. Rated PG 13. We know each other. He's a friend from work. Oh, come on. So it's true? You actually want to quit the Marvel Cinematic Universe? At least in 2019. Beaten. Battered. Crushed. Broken. And peeved. That becomes the fate of the Prince of Asgard. Following the death of their father, Odin, Thor and Loki's days become worse with the release of their elder sister and the goddess of death, Hela. Just like with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, there's still plenty of juvenile humor that keeps the spirit of the Marvel Cinematic Universe alive. It's like I said, it's stuff like this that keeps me smiling at these kind of movies. And while there's plenty of these moments, there are also some dark moments in the film that showcase the darker side of Marvel. And believe me, it's not pretty. And even after all that Thor went through in this movie, he seems to act more like a jolly fellow even after going through torture and temper tantrums. Right now, this stance is my favorite take on the Prince of Asgard 100%, and that's saying a lot considering what Loki went through as well. For a trickster god, he sure got his tricks turned against him completely. And I'm really glad they brought back the Incredible Hulk. It's been a long time since Age of Ultron that we saw the not-so-jolly green giant. Hey Marvel, why did you drop the ball on the Hulk, you cowards? Even more so, I'm also glad we finally see him talk more. All of his interactions with Thor are enjoyable. Just seeing them go back and forth is hilarious. Now, I also enjoyed a bit more on the backstory on Asgard. Now, we all know more about the goddess of death, Hela, but to see what she did prior to the events of any of the Marvel Cinematic Films, now that was an interesting, if disturbing experience. It's also interesting that Hela is a lot different from her comic book counterpart. I did some research prior to my review. But I actually wished Hela had more screen time. As crazy as the Guardian was as a secondary villain, I wish we saw more of the Goddess of Death just to see her go axe crazy and execute civilians, just to show how much of a monster she was. I know her actress did a good job with the role, but I felt like it was a bit wasted with little screen time she got. Oh, and I would have loved more action scenes. You know what they say, the more the merrier. And yet, even with that one flaw, Thor Ragnarok is still a great Marvel film. And I agree that this film is the best of the three Thor films due to the comedy, action, and the hammy performances of the cast. I hope that this kind of energy carries through to the 2019 Avengers film, which will be the epic conclusion to the big arc that has carried the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I'm really gonna miss watching these kind of films. Boy, those were some fun times. We're the same, you and I. Just a couple of hot-headed fools. Yeah, same. Hulk like fire, mm. Thor like water. Oh, kind of both like fire. But Hulk like raging fire, Thor like smoldering fire. <laughs> and why exactly do you want to quit the Marvel Cinematic Universe? That's easy. I want to go out on a high note after the 2019 Avengers film. That makes a lot of sense if you ask me. So folks, with next year's Avengers film, this might be the beginning of the end for me and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've had a lot of fun over the last 10 years at least, but I think after 2019, I might call it quits on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To Disney and Marvel, thank you for all the time that you've brought me.